Yo E, I need some advice. I'm 26 living with my mom currently and working at Red Lobster. I came to Dallas from San Antonio two years ago to try to save up some money for a new car and move back to San Antonio. Right as I was ready to do that, Corona hit, so I decided to stay and ride it out here. After a month, the restaurant I was working at called me back for a few days, but then it closed. The day it closed, I got to talking to a coworker and we met up later that night. Now she's my girlfriend. Uh, we're going on two years in April and I really care about her. During the early days of the pandemic, I most re mostly relied on my savings, uh, about $3,000 and some unemployment money. I tried, to hand, I tried my hand at stock markets uh, early in the year and I lost a lot of money. I was renting a car through Lyft and driving them during the summer, but I got my account deactivated. I've been using my mom's car to get to work while I save up for a few, uh, for a new one for myself, but I got into a wreck the other day and I'm not on the insurance. So now I have to buy two new cars <laughs> and I'm still on square one. It feels like living here, no matter what I do, I can't get ahead. I want to go back to San Antonio, but I also don't want to leave my girl. I've talked about it with her and she's willing to try the long distance thing, but I don't know how I feel about it. I want to be close because I feel like it's my responsibility to keep her safe, but I also really fucking hate Dallas. My question to you is, should I stay here with my mom, go back to San Antonio and get an apartment where the market is much more affordable or stay here and find my own place uh, or a place with some of the guys and try to save up money? You know, one of the best things to do when you don't know what to do is to do nothing. Hey, has anybody ever said that to you? It took me a long time to realize the wisdom in that because I'm one of these guys that want to do stuff, right? And you sound the same way, right? You're just not satisfied the way things are, and so we want to take matters into our own hand. Uh, it's interesting, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing Bible study with my kids, and so we're learning about the patriarchs of the Old Testament, right? Like Noah and Abraham and then Moses, it seems like, for example, Moses, right? Not Moses, Abraham, right? It seems like there's a pattern in the way God deals with men. And right now we're studying Abraham. And so God makes a promise to Abraham. He says, hey, Abraham, you're going to have children and you're going to have so many children that it's going to be like the stars in the sky. He's telling this to Abraham. And then, but Abraham has no kids yet. Abraham's wife can't seem to conceive. Abraham's like 85 years old and his wife is like in her 70s and still no children. But God made a promise to them. And instead of waiting, instead of, look, it had been many, many years, decades since God made that promise. And Moses, like many of us, grew impatient. No, Moses, Abraham, sorry. Abraham, like so many of us, grew impatient. Grew impatient. He's like, ah. You know, God, you're making this promise to me, but my wife is barren and we're getting old. And so his wife even comes to him and says, Abraham, I don't think God's going to come through for us. I don't think things are going to unfold the way that he's told us. I don't think life is going to be what we thought it was going to be. Why don't you go have sex with my servant? <laughs> right. Abraham's like, OK, right. Bad idea. It led to some trauma in his life and didn't work out really well. And so we're going through the problems that that Abraham caused because he was not patient. And then one of the lessons there of and as it relates to you is when you don't know what to do, do nothing. Wait on the Lord. And so my opinion is as unsexy as it is. Right. Because it would be nice if Elliot gave you a game plan. Right. What I'm saying to you as a 26 year old man in particular, right? Because I see these ages, I see the, your age as indicative of seasons in your life. Between 24 and 27, you have to be okay not knowing what's going to happen in your life. Even the, I, I think like the, the Old Testament is like our story. It's our story going over and over and over again. There are cycles in that old book and there are cycles in our life. And I think we, I don't think we could ignore that there are seasons in these cycles and there are seasons of waiting. There are seasons of waiting. Absolutely 100%. I tend to think based on the mathematics of, 
uh, uh, the fractal universe that I've studied that from age 12 to age 15, you're lost. You don't know what's going on. Those are That's your age of waiting and watching. Waiting, not waiting passively, but waiting and watching. Waiting and, and keeping your eyes open, keeping your ears open, being ready. Because at any moment, God's going to be like, boom, it's here now, ready, let's go. And if you're caught off guard, if you're caught with your pants down, you're not going to know what to do. So you got to be waiting, but you got to be watching. And so between age 24 and 27, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing because you, you're right at the top of that clock. Me at age 36, that's when I got lost to myself, right? I think God allows my life to be a display for many of you. That's why I lose a lot of fans because people are like, this guy, Elliot, is crazy. But I'm just as crazy as you guys are, except you get to see how crazy I am. And at age 36, I was freaking lost. Between age 36 and 39, I didn't know what I was doing. By 39, 40, that's when I started grounding man. And I was like, I got to speak to these men spe specifically. I was, I was lost. Right? And but my whole life got right on track, right about right about three four right about three years after thirty six. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, thirty six. So you're at twenty six. I think my opinion, I would give you guidance on how to wait, how to wait, but not passively wait. Go and get a job. Continue to try to find a job. Don't beat yourself up. Don't think that it has to be your career for life. Don't wonder and question whether or not this is going to take you to your promised land. It might and it might not. But stay active. Stay engaged. Go get a job, right? And see how it unfolds. Keep your, here's the other thing too. Keep your heart open for when God is going to show you an open door. He's absolutely going to show you an open door here sometime in your in the near future for you. I say within the next year. I say give yourself a year. Slow down. Keep saving your money. Keep trying to find jobs. It's nice that you're with this girl. I hope you guys keep continue to enjoy yourselves. But I think that there is going to be a moment at which everything's going to be super clear for you. At age 27, that's when I found Strongman. That's when I made my first YouTube video. That's when I created Strength Camp. At age 27, literally. I see it happening all over and over again for you guys, right? You, usually between the ages of 24 and 27, the guys are like, I don't know what to do. By 27, 28, 29, you guys are like, I know what I'm doing. I just need a little help. So it's okay not to know. It's okay not to know what you're doing. Um, as far as the details of your life is concerned, look, if you could stay with your mother for a little bit longer, knowing that it's your intention to move out. And I understand that COVID came in and made that, wash that dream away for you, right? It wasn't in the plans, in fact. But you went back for a reason, and I think it's good that you continue to save your money. Save your money. Save your money and work. Bro, there are so many work opportunities, it's outrageous right now. I live in rural Florida, and I drive up and down these country roads, and I see wanted sign after wanted sign after wanted sign. I can't imagine what it'd be like in a city like Dallas, Right? There's got to be work. Don't be afraid to work. Fill your day with work. Save up your money. Get that car that you need, right? Right? You got to get a car now, right? And you got to fix your mom's car now, right? Don't let that be a setback. Don't let that be something that beats you up. Don't let that be something that drags you down. Let that be a challenge to you, right? When we start looking at setbacks in life as challenges rather than curses, we start to have a positive attitude about things. And, 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 and timing is everything also. It do, don't feel like you're behind the times or you need to hurry up. You just put one foot in front of the other, doing what you're doing, well, being consistent, and everything's going to work out well for you, man. Don't feel too much pressure about doing anything magnificent with this girlfriend, right? If she is with you now, and she's willing to stick with you while you build yourself up. And she's there when you start to get your rubber to the road, then maybe she's wife worthy, right? That's how some women get to demonstrate their value as wife worthy, right? It's one of the ways that my wife demonstrated her value uh, to me. She was already my wife, but because she wasn't rushing me. She wasn't pressing me. She wasn't complaining when I was broke when I was living in her father's basement when we didn't know what we were doing she was very patient she was very patient and also 
very grateful. Is this girl grateful for the work that you're doing, right? Show her. You got to you got to demonstrate to your girlfriend that you're on your path. Not necessarily that you know your destination. It's okay. You don't need to. But on your path, meaning, yeah, I get up every day and I work and I don't complain about it. That's important. Women do not like men that complain. If you come home from your job and you complain to your woman, she's, she's, she's going to depolarize your relationship. She's not going to like that. I work willingly. I remember when I was working at the at, at a fitness gym, right? It was my first job here in Florida. I would be the first one at that friggin' gym. I would get there at 7 a.m., right? I will leave my house, or actually 6. I will get there at 6 a.m., right? So I could take my first client. And I wouldn't leave until 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night. I did that for about a year, maybe a little bit less, you know, maybe like six to eight months. But I did that every single day, Monday through Sunday. And it helped create momentum in my life, even though it wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it also created trust and gratitude in my wife. So this girl just needs to see that you're willing to work. She needs to see, you need to demonstrate that you're, a hardworking man that wants to make things right and you want to give her a good life. You know, that's the way it was, was for me. Um, don't go gambling your money in the stock market. That was a bad idea. I understand that you, you stopped doing that. Um, you said, it, it, it feels like living here, no matter what I do, I can't get ahead. It's just a season in your life. Don't grow attached don't get anxious. It's okay. He says, I want to go back to San Antonio, but I don't want to leave my girl. I say, don't go back to San Antonio and don't leave your girl. Stay right where you are. Once again, I, I mean, I'll wrap this up with the way I began. When you're not sure what to do, the best thing to do is to do nothing at all. In other words, don't make any grand move. Don't, don't take any huge action, right? A lot of times we mess shit up when we do that. Be patient. Be right where you are, but you doing what you have to do every single day, one foot in front of the other, and I think you're going to be okay, my man. Patience, my bro. Patience, and I think everything's going to work out well for you. Can't wait to hear how things unfold. Keep me posted, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.